of February. Uh, attendance as is. Welcome to our member of the public and welcome to the press. Now, before we start our meeting, I would like to read out these notes here uh, around code of conduct. The code of conduct sets out standards of behaviour. And part seven uh, expressly says that uh, councillors must not cause any reasonable person offence or embarrassment, must not bully or harass any person. Um, I would now like to uh, give Councillor Terrick the op opportunity to apologise for his aggressive behaviour at the last meeting. Um, in relation to what? I... In relation to pointing and yelling at staff members. I did um, not point. I was not getting into the I, I went up there. If you have a code of conduct, please, if, please put order. that code of conduct. Order. Order. Excuse me, order. This is I'm speaking to the council. It is. Yes, it is. Thanks, pardon everybody. I'm just giving Councillor Terry the opportunity to apologise. We'll move on now into our. I will apologise for the point. Not that I believe I have done anything. Oh. And if you have that perception, then I apologise. And an extra note that we will be voting according to what's written on the screen yeah. for each motion. Now, table of contents. As Just is. on that, Mayor, does that get cross checked with the audio? Of the, uh, the as per usual, yes. So table it does get cross checked with it the audio? It always has. Oh, well, I don't think so. Um, we're not going into that discussion. We're moving on with the meeting. Table of contents, as is, nothing, no changes. Acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge and pay our respects to the Tasmanian Aboriginal community as traditional and original owners and continuing custodians of this land on which we gather today and acknowledge elders, past, present and emerging. Does any council have any de declarations of pecuniary interest? Uh, this one's written. Sorry. You go. You yeah, go first. Yeah, I, I, written on me. Yeah, I have a personal explanation of clause 24 that I am named in the attachment to item 4.3 of the closed meeting. I find the comments to on me to be unfounded, derogatory and personally offensive. An important function of councillor under section 28.2d is to monitor the performance of the general manager and order. is Excuse for me, reasons order. that I order. remain in the chamber. Councillor Terry, you just need to nominate the item. And I am explaining can, my code. No, you don't need to do that now. Just nominate I the item. I do not believe that I need Excuse to disclose an interest and consider the report and will be considering the report free from bias. I wish to have disclosed an interest, that's fine. I am disclosing an interest put of a perceived interest, and the perceived interest with the derogatory comments that were in the attachment to the report. I'm explaining my uh, my not disclosure with that particular derogatory statements that were made. Right, yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay, anyone else have any conflict, any declarations of peculiar interest? Councillor? Okay. Section eight point one five five point three Campbell Town Hall. Other matters that I may find on, on the way through, and I too have uh, a situation of conflict. I mentioned in the general manager's review, and those documents have now gone to the solicitors. Right. Anyone else have a yes, Councillor Goss? Um, item seven point three point one and seven point three point two, which are about the. Reduction in speed limit and bike park extension. They're both concerned with the state growth and in the, at the present moment we should sit on those two items. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? No? Uh, confirmation of the council, the order, the minutes of the ordinary council meeting on Monday the 29th of January, subject to the following amendment. To item 11.1, 33 Wall Road, Perth, Multiple Dwellings, 11. That was screening. Um, there's a, a highlighted area there, neighbourhood, neighbour boundary fencing not to be less than 2.1 metres in height. Um, so we need a mover and a second. That's a true. Councillor McCullough, you're moving. Councillor Adams, you're seconding. Oh, second. Yep. Yeah. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. The date of the next council meeting will be Monday the 18th of March. 
Motions on notice. We have a motion on notice around the St Giles property at Rosarden. Um, the officer's recommendation is that council officers support Councillor Lambert's recommendation that a full report be tabled at the next council meeting regarding all relevant issues pertaining to the Rosarden block contested by St Giles. So, Councillor Lambert, you're moving that? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. I have a seconder. Councillor McCoa. Any discussion? Um, Councillor Goss. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Do I get to speak first? Yeah, yeah you can speak first. Yes. <laughs> Council Mayor, Council Thank Council. you, Thank you Mayor. Oh, oh, are these, sorry, I don't know. Are these debated? I don't know that they are. No, motion's on notice. We're debated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we respect yeah. other yeah. councillors have been able to yeah. speak to their motions. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Thank you. I'll, I'll be brief. <laughs> um, look, I brought this forward because um, obviously this is a bit of a unique situation. And um, I'm of the opinion that we, we need to work to, uh, together to solve this as quickly uh, and as sensibly as possible. Um, we're dealing with a not-for-profit dis disability organisation. Uh, we're dealing with ratepayers' money. It's uh, and I think a unique situation that we probably haven't been in before. So I think um, I'd like to see all available options come through that report so we can make a really quick and sensible decision about what's best and how we go about resolving this very quickly. Um, and I know there's one option on the table which could possibly take up to three years. And I'm hoping as a council that we could probably find a, a better solution, a quicker solution to, to bring this to fruition. Um, so I'd like to see that report come to council so we can look at all of the available opportunities. Um, as I said, that are sensible options um, I, I want to do my due diligence as a councillor to be able to make a, an informed decision. Um, so I would like to see that come. I'm not interested in setting precedents or, or anything like that because I know sometimes these situations can, can, can do that or, or perceived to do that. But I just think that um, we need to look at our cases on a case-by-case -case basis rather than one size fits all and given the unique situation here I think we need to, to look at all of the options available to us. Um, you know and I also put in the uh, the motion that you know as an act of goodwill hopefully that we can consider the repayment of the outstanding amount um, if another suitable solution can't be found. So I'm really keen to see that happen quickly um, but of course I understand we have legal boundaries that we need to, to fall into as well. So I'm hoping that we can look at this really sensibly and, and look at a, a pathway forward that's going to work for, as I said, our rate payers and also, you know, the disability sector who have only just discovered that this is, is an issue for them too. So, yeah. Councillor Goss. I think the information from our um, somebody about what the land was. Is it bushland or has it got buildings on it or campgrounds or cramp camp buildings or anything like that? It's, Any? it's a vacant block of land in Ross Island. Just a vacant block of land. Nothing, nothing. No infrastructure. Councillor Terry. Just speaking uh, in favour of this uh, motion, I look forward to report to come back. While it's chiefly an operational matter, we do need to consider the uh, report under Section 65. Uh, and that's that we get uh, advice in relation to that. And I think it's something that uh, whilst uh, operational matters aren't our functions, sometimes we need to raise this. And I congratulate Councillor Lambert for doing that. Councillor McCullough. Yeah. Can I understand who the owner was? The owner's deceased. Is that correct? It was um, gifted to St Giles, but the title never changed hands? Of, of the understanding that um, uh, a person, I can't remember the name, um, donated it or intended to donate it to St Giles yeah. and they all signed, all the parties signed, um, but for some reason... It hasn't been processed by the LTA. Processed. So, so based on the title, prima facie evidence that you've just told me, Council Lambert, we should, I agree wholeheartedly, we should be able to fix this very, very promptly and very quickly and uh, given that the amount of land is probably going to achieve more than the, um, the rates that have been paid, I would have to Clear that we should be able to get a pretty quick, quick solution next meeting. Okay, no further discussion. I'll put the recommendation on those in favour. Uh -huh. Aye. Uh -huh. Against. Carried. Uh, this motion, next motion is uh, the South Esk River Parklands Perth, and the, the officer's recommendation is that council officers support Council Lambert's recommendation that council modify the South Esk River Parklands Perth 
Master, the master plan to include a small boat ramp which can be utilised by kayaks, canoes and small boats. <coughs> Councillor Lambert, well, to move that. Move. Yes, of course, I'll move the motion. And Councillor Adams is seconding. Any discussion? Yes, I'd just like to speak yes. to the motion if I can. Um, 2019, Council first endorsed the, um, the Parklands Master Plan um, and that included a, a flood-proof canoe slash kayak launch. Um, but Perth is growing, out of control growing, in a great way now. And we have a lot of people in our community. And if you've read my little background notes there, you'll know that one in four people fish. Approximately 60% of those people fish from a boat. Um, so I think, you know, and, and um, we're a great fly fishing community. Lots of people fly fish and other forms of fishing. And it's a lot out of boats. We've done some great work down, down at the riverbank um, so far, but I just think there's an opportunity to modify the plan a little bit to include um, a small boat ramp. And as I've said in, in the notes, um, there may be an opportunity to, to uh, partner with MAST. They have two really good um, funding opportunities that they, they put forward. One's a small boating fund and the other's a larger recreational boating fund. So I'm sure we'll be able to, and one of them operates all year, the other one has a few more guidelines to it. But I'm sure we'll be able to, to find a way of, of working with perhaps MAST. Um, the other point that I'd like to make is that Longford has a really large boat ramp and it's really heavily utilised. It's a great facility, caters for lots of different types of boat vessels. Um, I think by modifying this to, to create, a, to, to cater for smaller boats would also go some way to take a little bit of, a little bit of pressure off that. It will allow people in their own community to, to use the South West River um, right at their own doorstep. It's an absolute loop, jewel in the crown, going right past the doorsteps of Perth. And as I've said, you know, there's some great plans in the master plan of, of what we, we as a council are planning to do. And I just think that if we could um, look at varying it a little bit, it would be a much better plan I think we would get a lot more utilisation from, from you know the locals, um, and I'm and I'm really pleased that the officers have recommended to support this motion. So um, I hope my fellow councillors will do the same. Ms. Um Yes. Um, all right. I note the recommendation. Um, I just caution that um, MAST may have to approve that. Yeah. Um, so we would have to go through that process. Councillor Terrett. I'm uh, just wondering if uh, this could also include, uh, Council Lambert, that that be included as a consideration in the 24-25 budget. Oh, can't, sorry, uh, no other, uh, Council Archer. Uh, look, I have a couple of concerns here. I mean, the reason I presume that originally it was kayaks and can canoes is that they don't have motors. Um, and does small boat mean a small boat with an outboard motor? Because the last thing you want is jet skis and small boats with output motors going up and down that river, I'd suggest you're going to create a few issues. So uh, electric motors or oars, I'd be quite happy to support it, but no outboard motors. Councillor Andrews. No, I didn't have my hand. Okay. okay. And I further just, just in relation to that, I just... Councillor Terry, you've already spoken... No, I'm right. clarifying a point. I'm afraid you've already spoken... No, I've already... I just want clarification, because I've no. asked... No. I asked no. the mover no. whether she would accept both councillors sit down, stop yelling, and you've already had to say, Councillor. I'm asking the mover that I ask whether that can be included in the budget for 24 25. That was my question, and it was never answered. There's a motion we've been working on, and it's going to come back to us that the master plan be modified to include the small boat ramp which can be utilised. There is no mention yet of the budget because we haven't gone through well, the budget process. Well, I've moved it to the motion. It can, it can come into the yeah, budget can process. Can I sum up? Yes, you can. Sum up? Yes. Um, in summing up, I would be quite happy to, and I take on board all the points that have been raised, I'd be more than happy to have that included as a budgetary item. Um, and I do take on the point that Councillor Archer has made. Um, yeah. Electric motors, etc., are, are, are really probably a viable option. So I do take that point on board and all. Um, 
So I think there's some things there that might come back in the report for us to 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 to, to have a look at. So um, I'm more than happy for those things to be included in the budget. My main concern is that um, we get support for this moving forward so we can actually include it into the master plan as something that's going to happen. So we can include And I do ask councillors, please be respectful of each other. No yes, yelling. Please. And please, if you have a speak, you've got your chance to talk then. And I've if you've missed something, I'm very sorry. It's just bad luck. Because we're under the rules, you speak once. I can ask a question um, at any time. The summary has been done. I'm putting the motion. Take a breath. Check the last thing to make sure it's okay. And that the matter be included in the 24-25 budget deliberations. And we need to do something about the electric motors now, or is that? Oh, look, I think that should. That is something that will come back in the report. Yes. I'm sure. Yes. Um, my, my only query about that is I don't want this to be knocked out now. If okay, 24-20. Okay, so well, the yeah. acting general manager has said well, it's not asking for a report, so you may want to put it in now. Yeah. Watch my puns. Oh, and that's the mover and the seconder. It's still in the master plan. Uh, and small boats with electric motors. Is that what you're saying? Well, look, I want I want to be able to make sure that that we can modify the plan to ensure that a uh, a, a boat ramp pontoon or similar, whatever's the most appropriate for that space can be put into the master plan. So if that means I've got to add in the oh, budgetary yes. things, I will add that in. Yeah. Um, I don't want that to be something <coughs> that ends up knocking it out of the master yeah. plan. I want it to be included in the master plan and part of those deliberations because I imagine at the moment we're also looking at politicians are looking for projects and, and things like that. So I don't want it to be oh, we can't do that because it's not in the budget. I want to make sure that we have that flexibility. And I must apologise, I didn't see the with electric motors or ores. Like, it has to be... Well, oh, look, no, I'm, I don't want... No, I, I'm happy to leave it as it is. They're conversations that will probably come yeah, when exactly. it comes to a... I imagine a report will come back to council and when, yeah. when we come to build it and create it. And those sorts of things, I believe, will be adequate, adequately considered at that time. And I will now say that something up's happened. I'm going to put the motion. I've it's, got the hand up to speak. I realise, but it's been summed up already, mm. that the matter be included in the budget. It's been added. Ridiculous. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carry. Questions on notice? They will now be read out. The council received the questions on notice and the answers provided. Well, they don't need to be read out. Yes. Yeah. yes. Council, I want a mover of the second, I beg your pardon. Yes. So we accept the meeting by the questions on notice, Councillor McCullough. Interesting. Councillor Terrett. All those in favour? Aye, aye. Against? Carried. Okay, Council Committee confirmation of the minutes. Recommendation for the following minutes of meetings of the Council Committee to be received. I'll move. Councillor Adams, Councillor Lambert. All those in favour? Aye. aye. Against? Carried. Now, under the Council Committees, the recommendations from the Campbelltown District Forum. They have a recommendation around footpaths for new developments, and the officer's recommendation is that Council note the recommendation. Right. Move to the second. You're moving, Councillor? Oh, yeah, I'll move it. Yeah. But I would like to ask a yes, cloud yes, yes, and Councillor mm -hmm. Andrews is seconding. Okay, Councillor Lambert. I just wanted to get a clarification on when Council, the officer's recommendation says that council note the recommendation, does that mean, or note the request, for example, does that mean that that, that then will be actioned or are we just noting it? Um, there's just a, a number of them that say that council notes the motion. Is that the end of it or are we noting it on the information items? Or I just want some clarification to make sure that, um, because the committee's spent a lot of time coming up with the, these, you know, motions, yeah. and I wonder whether sometimes that's the right... Sometimes indicates to me that are we going to do anything about it? Are we going to action it or not action it? I'm just not sure whether that's... We'll get our works manager. Yeah. You've got comments? Well, I don't think I've got it. Part of the planning scheme, we can actually ask for... We will ask for a foot path foot area. I suppose they're looking... I'm not sure if they're looking at the baker. Um, development down in William Street, or they're looking at the unit development from the uh, affordable homes. So, uh, 
Um, in, in that case, I'm not too sure, but affordable homes, as far as I know how they've set up, they don't have to, it's not a subdivision, where bakers are actually doing everything to these and bringing it out to William Street, then it'll be up to council to finish that. Councillor Andrews. Um, part of the reason I, I asked the question about when we were talking about public open space in our workshop earlier um, was to do with this. There's, um, and I'm wondering if I can check the poli current policy that we have with council in terms of when a subdivision goes in and it's the first one in that area and who becomes responsible for the footpaths. You know, do we do we suggest that the developer has to pay for the footpaths all along that street, not just outside his, or do we say his or hers, or do we say can you um, give some money in lieu of when those footpaths are built? Um, and if I can get an answer to what our policy is at the moment, then I'm wondering if that can be shared with Campbelltown District Committee, because they're confused about who's responsible for building footpaths in new areas and when they should be built and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, basically we have, as a council, we have a footpaths um, program. <coughs> Usually that starts at a school and works out, um, the main streets and, and, and from the school and works out. Mm. So it does take a long time to get to the outer street. Mm. Um, but if there's subdivisions that they normally um, pay for front of their subdivision or they can they can either install it or do a contribution towards mm. that footpath mm. but in some cases depends on the planning um, report in some cases because there's no footpaths in the area um, and not planned to be in the next 10 years basically mm. um, then they wouldn't ask for the footpath contribution. Mm. Councillor Brooks. Yeah same thing again with this um, West Street uh, road. I went and had a look at it. Oh, that. we're not we're not onto that one yet. Well, <laughs> yes, we are. Because no, we're we're that. Sorry, no, it's the footpaths and the oh, development. Right. Yeah. 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 Councillor Council Terry. Just in relation to this, and I think Councillor Lambert made a very good point that receiving note really doesn't give any clear directions, and actually, uh, about eighty percent of recommendations from district committees are receiving note the past. The uh, I would like to see, particularly William Street, included in the uh, footpath, footpath program for the coming year. This precinct is a lot of aged units where people use uh, mobile uh, uh, devices and, and so forth. They're on walkers. It's, um, if you're going up to the hospital and medical services, there is no footpath on either side. Uh, they're, they're considerations which probably go beyond just saying, well, it's part of the program. Uh, and William Street and uh, Pettus Street are certainly ones that uh, really highlight that concern. And we should be able to try to get access, particularly for elderly people, back into the shopping centre area. Um, I'm always concerned when we just have received a note, it's a very negative uh, response back to some of the district committees. Certainly if there's an area of need, a greater need because of something's changed, um, yet yeah, then obviously that goes um, it has a higher priority in the program, so um, I'd suggest that that's referred to the budget deliberation. Yeah. Work, works manager. Uh, as far as William Street, uh, with the upgrade Main Street, actually, it actually returns back beside the hall, so you're only looking to, to hook that other um, area up, it's probably only uh, in front of two houses, so it's not a big area to pick up the Baker subdivision. But if we're looking at picking up the affordable homes, it's probably just something we need to come across the road in the future. There's no curb and gutter down there, it's all open drain, so sort of a bit ugly. Okay, I'll put that recommendation, all those in favour? Uh, against? Against. Carried. Oh, against, Councillor Jones, against. against. Nobody else? My apologies. Carried. Um, their next recommendation is around roadworks in West Street. The officer's recommendation is that Council note the report. Council Brooks. Yeah, I just think... Oh, first of all, I'm going to have a mover and a seconder. Sorry. Councillor Andrews and okay. Councillor... No, I'm not. Councillor Andrews is moving. Can I have a second though? Oh. Yes, Councillor Brooks. All right. I just feel the frustration that the district committees must have with some of these responses. An operational matter, well, we know it's an operational matter, but surely they can be respected and given a decent answer to the state of the road and what's going to happen with it. It doesn't take that much to get a, get a proper answer back. Now, to read that, out of the next meeting in the minutes, operational maintenance options being reviewed. Doesn't tell them anything. 
whether the, the road's going to be repaired fully, uh, some hot mix put in there, or what. I went up there and had a look at it. It's a terrible piece of road. You nearly need a four-wheel drive to get through there. So, you know, to get a response back like that, I'm disappointed that we... Um, that we are giving district committees, who are supposed to be a conduit for council, these type of responses. Any comment, Works Manager? Uh, I thought I'd say that in discussion with um, uh, Borrell, who are uh, who've got the rights over that road at the moment. They're actually working on how they can repair it uh, for the future. It's no good just doing a band aid thing. I do I see the frustration on the local committee. I really can. Uh, I had a meeting with them a fortnight ago and I've actually got another one in about a week's time. And I better actually pass on some more information of where we're at with the road. Why couldn't that be put in there? Like you've just explained it to, to us all sitting here, how much more trouble was two more, three more lines to put in that report back to the district committee? Councillor McCullough. I was just going to ask the exact same question. Why can't it be put in the, in the minutes? Councillor Terry. Uh, just, I just think it's one of those things that uh, along the same lines, but whether we are putting uh, for our 24-25 budget deliberations or whether it's a matter for Borrell to pay for the lot, uh, it's a question that I'd be concerned if we don't make the allocation in West Street, which has had a number of cars damaged on there already. We had a caravan damage there on the weekend. There's a major caravan show going to the show showgrounds. Anybody using that, there are no signs warning not to go down that road because you could get some damage to your vehicle, except a 40k zone. Uh, it is a, probably one of, in an urban area, it's probably one of our worst roads in an urban area that I've seen because of the trucks. Councillor Andrews. No, fine, thanks. Uh, I'm sure the works manager will bring that to our public deliberations yeah, because yeah. he's um, negotiating with the parties at the moment. Okay. I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Against. <coughs> Councillor Terrence against. Anybody else? Carried. Evandale Advisory Committee will have a recommendation around the Pioneer Park upgrade. And again, it's the Council note to request. I move around a second that, please. Councillor Boss. Second that, Councillor Lambert. Any discussion? discussion. Councillor Terrence. Uh, the district committee have asked for an update on this and I, as a two-way communication, I think it would be quite reasonable for somebody from the council to actually uh, give them a bit of an update of where they are at, at, at Pioneer Park. Um, there is concern to be raised about the positioning of the play equipment uh, and uh, also in the toilets, I won't raise that. But uh, I think it's, again, it's a big courtesy of saying, we want our, to open the communication channels between the district committees. Uh, when I get people in the district committees come back and say, well, why do we put anything up? It's going to be received a note. I'd like to see us having a better communication with our district committees. Any further debates? I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Uh, against. Against. Councillor Terrence against. Carried. Their next recommendation is around the Baker Group development. And it is again that council note that a motion. Uh, Councillor Goss, you're moving it. Have a second, please. Councillor Adams, any discussion? Discussion. Councillor Terry. Uh, discussion in relation to basically the district committees just want to be kept up to date. Again, communications, and even if it was just a uh, advice that if once a formal application is received, the district committees would be advised accordingly. That's all they want. And if had we do it, done anything more, um, and that's what I think they were looking for. I don't think receiving a note is the way to go. Oh, Councillor Boss. I'm just going to ask a question, just a clarification question on that. If um, if a developer has put in an application, uh, is council allowed to divulge that they've done that? I mean, it hasn't been been through all the correct channels. Yeah, well, it'll be publicly advertised. Yeah, until it's publicly advertised, then it'll be notified. But are we allowed, are we allowed to give out... I mean, if Baker's put an application tomorrow, for example, on this one, um, to council, but until it be advertised, we wouldn't be able to go out publicly, would we? We don't normally go out, no. Yeah. But um, we could give a, an update to the community to say that yeah. we're still waiting on it. We expect to get in the next two months or mm. three months or whatever. And council... Uh, yes, like I'm a bit concerned about giving updates 
everyone want an update? I mean, basically, if we have information, it should be passed on. If it's not being passed on, maybe that's a problem. But an update for an update's sake, I think we're just a bit careful about you know how it goes with all this. Um, the policy should be that if we receive communication, that communication is passed on to those who are interested. And that's not necessarily what an update means. Update means, no, nothing's happened, and that's an update. So I just think we've got to give it. And I do believe those groups have received those sorts of updates in the past. Okay, I'll put that recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Against. Council Chair, it's against. The motion's carried. Um, their next recommendation is around the dump point at Honeysuckle Banks, and again, the recommendation is that Council note the motion. Oh, I missed one. Sorry, yeah, bigger pardon. Okay, traders in purple. Again, it's note the motion. Council Goss. I'll move my second. And a second. Councillor Andrews. Any discussion? Councillor Terrell. I oh, yeah, again I reiterate the need to keep open channels and the fact that they advertised uh, Traders in Purple in the Courier uh, back in December. People are getting wondering where, the, where it's at and I think even if we write to them, uh, to uh, the uh, District Committee advising that we will keep them informed as much as we can, I think that just opens that communication and I just think that will be a better way of going. I'll put the recommendation, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against. Against. Council Chair, it's against. The motion's carried. Okay, now the dump point at Honeysuckle Banks. Not too fast. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, the opposite recommendation is that Council note the recommendation. Council Goss. Yes. Second Council Lambert. Okay, any discussion? Council Chair. Discussion again. I think the comments from the officers uh, are indicative. And that's probably what we should be saying, that uh, once we've, uh, it'll be subject to a DA and that will be advertised accordingly and consideration for including this as part of the 24-25 budget deliberation process is where we should be looking at uh, rather than uh, just saying I will undertake budget allocation. I think it's important to put that as part of, part of the 24-25 budget. That's a cost. It's just um, that the there and there was a shed load of trucks there and not trucks, uh, caravan. Yeah, not fabulous. Mm -hmm. They were absolutely everywhere. Mm -hmm. And when we did the dump, dump point, there'd be a facility to put a toilet there as well because we've got the infrastructure for the dump point. That's something we'd have planned yeah, to do. Yeah, yes, it's a, 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 a toilet. Toilet. It's public toilet plus a dump point. Yeah, it's a good Hopefully. idea, I think. <laughs> So we need to encourage them at the moment to use their own. They've all got the yeah. toilets on board. Yeah, that's good. That's probably great. Okay, I'll put that recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Against. Council Territory against. The motion's carried. Do you need the... Oh, you've got one. Sorry. You don't need to... Need that. Just fill that and drink that. Um, excuse me, I have to ask Council Terrett, do I need to leave the room for this one? Well, uh, not for you, it's for sure. I'm on a... Your advice. Sure, your sure, sure, sure. 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 Excuse me, I'm not talking to you. Which item are we talking about? Sure. One at a time, please. Let's clarify which item. The speed limit in Longford. Wellington Street. Wellington Street. Uh, I'm not raising it. I, I was going to go with the recommendation. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, the recommendation for the local, Longford Local District Committee is about a reduction in speed limit and the officer's recommendation is that Council request the Department of State Growth to carry out a review of the speed limits in Wellington and Marlborough Streets in Longford. Councillor Adams. Yeah, I think the... Oh, uh, I need a mover and a second. I beg your pardon. I'll move. Thank you. And a second, Councillor Brooks. Okay, Councillor Adams. Uh, yeah, the committee um, uh, has concern about the speed limit and has asked on many occasions to endeavour to get it down. I think Chrissy had the opportunity and reduced it from 60 back to 50 and uh, they'd like to get the same thing. I mean Chrissy was successful and, uh, and good on Chrissy but uh, the opportunity here uh, should be there's a lot of traffic in Longford and 60 is uh, a, a reduction to 50 would be a great opportunity. Now I know what State Growth says if it's in the shopping complex but there's a lot of areas, our library our, in Wellington Street. Um, these are issues with people crossing all the time. Um, Banjos, uh, uh, JJ's is a busy place. 
And um, so, you know, I think it's a very reasonable thing. And we should try, you now I, I take what officers have said, I think that, um, you know, state growth listens to the community and to councils, and I look forward to hoping they do. Uh, we probably need to do a bit of lobbying and uh, to try and get people to try to get state members to take it up. Yes. Councillor Adams, I don't know if you realise it's 50 from the entrance right through yes. to the end of the shops. Oh, right, yeah, but it's, it's, it's the other, it's the other bit. Yeah. Sorry, yes, that, it's the other it's bit. The other, yeah. And also, um, uh, it's also Wellington Street from City Beach yeah. Corner. Yeah. Uh, the other bit, you get the same problem. And so it's it's getting consistency as well uh, with, a, with a 50 up to where Cressy Road starts. Yeah. Lewis Lewis Street, Lewis Street. Lewis Street. Any more comments? I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Uh, no. Against? Carried. And I do believe Councillor Goss yes, said 732 as well. Yes. Okay, the bike path extension. The officer's recommendation is that Council requests an update from the Department of State Growth on the matter and provides advice to the committee. Councillor Adams. I'll move that. And they, oh, um, a seconder, that. please. Councillor Andrews. Um, it's just that they'd like to get a... I, I know we've had promises from the state ministers on, uh, uh, on you know, the next tranche of federal money um, and uh, they evidently didn't have enough to do the last one and they spent it on the, on the truck park. So hopefully uh, if we could get a bit of timeline, that would be very handy so people could start thinking about it. Nothing further? Okay, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carry. Okay, we will go to public question time now. Oh, yes, yes, there we go. Are there any members of the public who would like to make a statement or ask a question? Not at the moment, thank you. Mayor Mary. Okay, well we can go back to, yep, we've got no planning items, so we'll go back to where we were. Um, the Perth Local District Committee have a recommendation around playground shade. I haven't missed anything. No, no that's fine. Right. The officer's recommendation is that council take no action. A mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Council Archer and Councillor Boss, thank you. I do believe that's been taken. Yes, because the shade is actually. Yeah. Council Lambert. Can I just ask that perhaps a, a copy of the plan of what the structure is going to look like be forwarded on to the committee so they can get a visual of what's actually going to happen there um, so they can actually see what's going to happen. I think that would be good to see. The committee send a policy or they understand what the council's policy is doing it? Yes, but I don't think they agree with the policy. No, they would no, like no, to see some shade over. Yes. Some of the structures, and I think they have some very good arguments for it. However, um, they're not the council. Council Adams, one, Adams, one at a time, please. Yeah. So, however, I think in this instance, perhaps if we could just get a plan to go back in the interim, and um, these comments to go back to the committee, um, then I presume they will consider their next move. Mm. And that can occur without it needing to go exchange the recommendation. Okay, I'll put the recommend no other comments. Oh, I just agree with Yes, that. Councillor Terry. I agree with Councillor Lambert's comment. I think there are some considerations for Seacombe Park, uh, Street Park, and uh, I think keeping the district committee informed is important. And I'll be pleased to know it's I think already under construction. Yeah. Okay, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against Carry. The relocation of planter boxes. The officer's recommendation is that the planter boxes remain in situ and form part of the overall design of the main street and that the um, committee is advised of the council's decision. Um, a move and a seconder, please. Councillor Andrews. 
And a secular place. No, 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 Councillor yes. Andrews. Um, just that I, I agree with the um, recommendation from the officers because um, the officers' comment um, uh, explains the situation that they've talked to the people that um, actually look after these planter boxes and they want them to stay where they are. So I think that's probably a fair comment. They're taking care of them and, and they're very happy to keep taking care of them and they like them where they are. Councillor Lambert. Um, my understanding from talking to uh, one of our community members is that there are a variety of people who actually look after these. It's not just one person. So I think um, I'm just wondering whether the officer might be able to give us a bit of advice on, on the planter boxy situation because I understand there's a variety or there's a number of people that look after them in different locations and, and what that might mean water and access and things like that. Correct. The ones outside the post office have been and looked after by uh, some elderly citizens there looking doing a great job and they also plan to change the plan. The other ones are uh, a lady down the street waters most of those. But with the upgrade of the main street where the rewatering system put into the um, the shale areas and that actually the watering system will actually be placed on the planter boxes at the same time. Future. So so my understanding that perhaps um, as wonderful as these volunteers have been doing this work for us, they may not be needed in the and future. And we'll see for one more. Thank you for the work that have done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for the work that have done. Thank you for, for clearing that up. I appreciate that. Councillor Jarrett. I just wonder if the comments of uh, the works manager could also be communicated back to the committee because at this stage we're getting uh, information that contradicts the report and I'm particularly concerned to hear that some volunteers just don't water it, they don't, they want them moved and that's where it's come from. But, uh, but if that can be communicated back to the district committee, that would be fantastic. Okay, I'll put the recommendation, yeah, I'll put the recommendation, all those in favour? Aye. Against? Yes. Councillor Terrence, Point of order, point of order. Stop swearing. Councillor Adams. I didn't uh, swear. Yes, yes, yes there was. I heard it from over this side. So I heard the word nonsense. That's not swearing. Oh, Excuse me. Yes, yeah. Everybody, everybody be respectful, please. Okay, the next um, recommendation from the first level district committee. Mm. That's, that's enough. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, we're on the mules. We're going on to the mural maintenance. The officer's recommendation is that council officers undertake a review of costs related to the installation and maintenance of the murals. Councillor uh, Goss. Move the motion. I'll see second. Councillor Terrett. Uh, look, I was just a second. Okay. Any any discussion? Sorry. Councillor uh, Andrews. A question. Sorry. Yeah, right. question. A question. Um, have we still got the little team of mural painters in Perth? Are they still operational or have we lost a few? They've just completed the right mural yeah. for, for Avoca. They won an award, so they're still which around. gave them enough to um, right. do a mural for somewhere else and they right. gave it to Avoca. Yeah. I think Thanks. they stopped for a while because they had the mural in their garage and they didn't have yes. any room for anything else. Good. Thanks. I just wanted to. Councillor Adams. Uh, thank you, Matt. I just wanted to raise this. It seems to be um, some people have said that people have said that people got paid a lot of money to paint the mural. <laughs> no, it's no, totally no. untrue. I don't know that. They won but an award and people, got some funds. Yeah, and people, uh, you know, so that's quite a full thing. So mm -hmm. uh, I just hope we make sure that we, you know, state the facts and yeah. what's true out there. And people that go around saying people got paid. Lots of money to do it. You know, they volunteered and they made their time and their artistic ability to put the murals up, which is terrific. And amazing group of people with amazing yeah. projects. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Archer. Look, I, I know the, the recommendation says review the costs related to installation and maintenance of the murals, and I think the key word here is maintenance. Um, does anyone check what type of paint they use, whether it's going to be 10 years, what who's going to look after it in 10 years' time? I just think we need to have a little bit of control over what happens if we are respected to maintain them or remove them. Um, a good mural is great, and one that's not looking very tired doesn't look so great. So I just think we need to have a policy on putting them up and who is going to actually maintain them. Yeah. Any comments from the work manager? Because he has to put them up. Uh, so I've just made myself uh, taken that on board about um, what what they have used to, to put clear over them. Uh, I will follow up with the people who have actually done the work and report back. 
Can I make a comment? Because I, I know. Some, I, no, I can't. I oh, just a comment. Um, you've already I, spoken, I'm afraid. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. The Bicycle Advisory <laughs> Committee have a recommendation around Longford Main Street. Um, and the re officer's recommendation is that the officers report back to the Bicycle Advisory Committee detailing all the considerations Council took into, took into account with the proposal. Okay. Council Lambert. You're moving that. Can yes. you second that, please? Council Andrews. Council After, did you wish to... Oh, no, I was going to second. Sorry. No comments? Oh, Council Andrews. Can I ask a question, even though I seconded it? Um, is this a bit late? Does this come onto council table before or after we made the decision on Wellington Street upgrade? Because it looks as though it came after and therefore is almost Yeah, superb. well, that's what Council Lambert might be able to... Um, no. I think some their more minutes information. came in... Later. Yeah, that's came what I wanted. Yeah. yeah, so that's why. Okay. Um, it's a little bit retrospective, yeah. So we can still, still move and second this one and yeah. just pass it. But yes. I think they're sort of also under the impression that anything that might happen into the future... Yeah. They'd like to yeah, yeah. have some yeah. input. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. That answers your question? Yeah, thank you. Put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carry. And another one around the Longford Main Street. The officer's recommendation is that the redesign is tabled at the next. Oh, this is probably a similar mm, answer. Yes. Tabled at the next available bicycle advisory committee meeting. The committee to move a motion for council's consideration. If a bicycle committee quorum is not met due to insufficient numbers, that the, com the committee's comments and discussion be included for council's consideration. We just need to move and second it. Councillor yep. Lambert, and a seconder. I'll second. Thank you. Councillor Adams. I'll put that recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Uh -huh. Against? Carried. Okay, information items. I'm moving on a second of course. Councillor Lambert, Councillor Adams, any questions? Councillor Terry. Question in relation to the uh, Evandale uh, Committee recommendation for speed zones around Leydon's Road, High Street intersection. It's under completed. Uh, the action there is it's been written to the uh, state growth. Uh, whether it's been completed because we've written a letter, it still is outstanding uh, because we haven't heard a response from that, as we normally keep them outstanding until we do get a response. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll take that on board and do that. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Boss, did you have any other questions? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, just, um, just looking in that, back there about the Chrissy swimming pool, you know, the upgraded pool, they've done that. Um, it's up to the weekend pool and uh, it's really great. We've got such a great development there and, uh, and, the, and the, the town's um, um, really happy with the development and how it's working. But on, um, on Saturday, there was 125 people there in the pool and on Sunday there was 136 swimmers, not all at once of course, so, um, but they there. that's the only people paid money to go in and swim at the, swim at the pool, plus the season ticket holders, they don't pay so they went on the record, but, um, and uh, 136 swimmers and 12 onlookers and that was about 3 o'clock on Sunday, so, um, and they're still coming in, so it was a, a really successful weekend, probably the weather, but it just shows, um, and looking around the, the, um, the uh, crowd, the patrons, there wasn't many local people there. A lot of people from the from the outside of the town are coming to um, to Cressy to use the facilities, and uh, and that, that's really good to see. There was quite a few locals there, but uh, there wasn't just uh, wasn't just like people people coming to town. They come out, they go to go to the um, bakery on the way home, and they go to the pool when the they're there. So it's quite good. That's impressive, and I believe we and Oatlands are probably taking all the customers. <laughs> Councillor Adams. I'd just like to uh, reinforce uh, what Councillor Boss had said, um, having used the pool a few times since the upgrade, really working well, and it's, uh, it's a terrific uh, asset for the community, and uh, there was a few locals there when I was there, but it was uh, late afternoon, yes. Councillor Archer. Right. Oh, sorry, sorry, wrong here. Okay. Um, just wanted to comment on uh, item number 16, the overhanging trees and hedge at Macquarie Street. Um, really pleased to see that there seems to be a solution that's um, been arrived at between both parties. This has been a long-running 
um, issue an item for the council and the owners. So it's really good to see it looks as though it's been resolved finally. Much to the um, works manager's um, relief, I would imagine. <laughs> Councillor Terry. This is probably a question through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Cox. Uh, I believe that uh, I've been approached, I think Councillor Andrews have been approached about Chrissy Poole and having a particular time for older ladies to go and use the pool by themselves. I wonder if that's been considered at stage. I've, it has been, we've gone back to the people concerned. Yeah, I can't give any information about it. I just. So the committee know about it? Uh, no, it was, it was um, not committee people, it was a, a couple of ratepayers, and the, mm. they've been gone back to and explained that it's, the problem is lifeguards trying to get lifeguards to be there when they want to swim. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll put the, re the recommendation, all those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Now we go to community and development reports. Page 41. And we need a room and a second for the recommendation that the report be noted. Oh, Councillor okay. Adams. Am I seconding that? Or and am I no, you're moving it. Okay. And I need a second. Councillor Andrews. Any discussion? For that one. No discussion? I'll put questions. Uh, sorry, there's a, I've, I've asked this question before, but if this is the right time to ask it again, I would imagine. Uh, in terms of 2.3, um, is there something that council should be doing at this stage about that matter, or what's the state of the matter? Which matter? Uh, matters awaiting decision by task and oh, yeah. TPC, so mm -hmm. um, number one, the Tannery Road appeal. Oh, yep. We just wait. Um, yes, well, we'll what is the date is it at? Here in the second. <laughs> It says in the report there that there's a hearing date set for the 8th of March. Oh. And so... I thought it was... Sorry. It's been delayed. And so mediation's been... Mediation's undertaken. Mm -hmm. There's been some... Yeah, so mediation. we'll have to give you a further update. No, my question is a little bit different to that. My question is, is there something else that Council should be doing at this stage in terms of the process under, being undertaken? Not that I'm aware of, Should but we, we can, be, um, I can take that. Um, preparing more papers or more information or whatever? No, I wouldn't have thought so, but um, I can take that question on notice and check with our planners, but I understand that it's all in hand. I, I take it from my reading. Yeah, oh, Adams. sorry. Yeah, Councillor Adams. You're right. Um, uh, thank you, Mayor. I take it from here. There was a hearing set for the 8th of March, but that's been. Uh, the appellant has applied to the tribunal uh, for a order adjourning the hearing. Is it? Oh. That's the way I understand it. Yep. Okay. So there won't be a hearing on the March. Sorry. Well, if the tribunal says no. Yeah. So we're we'll waiting for yeah. uh, Just in relation to that 2 3, the Bedford Street Campbell County, so they have put in an appeal against our decision, is that correct? Yes. And we will be negotiating uh, mediation? Yes. Okay. Nothing else? Okay, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Okay, government. What's my policy? No, I'm just going to have to control. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I didn't put it here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, done that. We've done that one, so we're going to do it. 13.2? Yeah, no, I'm just trying to get my computer to do it. Okay, 13.2 is the public open space contribution policy review. Uh, Councillor Boss. Oh, I'll second that. Okay. I haven't missed anything, have I? No, I haven't missed one. No. Okay. And Councillor Adams will second him. Oh, yeah, Councillor Box. Um, what I'm moving, if you're okay. I've got, a, I've got just a few questions on this and probably to the officers. Um, you know, just on, I'm a little bit confused about it. I've got the policy, but it wasn't clear to me. Um, uh, my, my, my concern was about. Um, uh, 
the group homes and start and start the titles. And I look back over the corner of one account with was called multiple drilling. Um, are they only paying one lot of fourteen hundred? But if they put eight multiple drillings on a house, but on a block, they they it probably should be considered. It's my, it's my understanding it doesn't apply to um, group homes. Group homes or um, groups of units. It only applies for if you create new lots. Only if but if they, these are all on one lot, yeah. then it doesn't apply. What I'm what I think we should be doing, I'm not sure if then this might not be the policy, but we need to have a policy on these multiple drillings and group homes. You know, think of that as well, only because you know they're putting so many places on the on the blocks, so many houses with no public open space in there on the grounds. They're using our parks. They they have to go there because there's nowhere on the blocks, and I think that's something we're probably missing out. If this is only for the um, for the uh, development of um, uh, Lots, and that's all first of all. We need to probably look at some other way of coping with those kind of group houses or multiple drillings or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they really do concern me. Well, that falls into our density. Um, Didn't hear that. That falls into our density provisions, um, which Council have already. But, what I'm saying, they should be contributing now uh, towards, towards this because you know, these people contribute towards the um, public open space, so we should be, they should be doing that as well. Councillor McCullough. If I could just make comment to Councillor Goss, um, that would be covered off by the fact that rates would be payable on all properties once the strata goes through. So the strata goes through and all those eight properties on there will pay rates. I'm just asking Councillor, he might know the better answer, what about a multiple dwelling? So they sort of same thing, because it goes into multiple dwelling. Or is it is? It's it almost just down, it's almost just down to value. So what, what happens is they'll work at the rent of all those eight dwellings and the rates will be done accordingly. So that's, yeah. Councillor Archer. I think it was mentioned before that um, the policy of 5% of the development, so if you're putting a lot of buildings on a site, that development might be $10 million, 5% of that will be your contribution. If it was one dwelling, it might only be a $500,000 development. Apply. It's my understanding that doesn't apply. Doesn't apply? No, we're talking about the vacant land when we're creating the lots. So you're talking about subdivision? Oh, I see. Yeah, this is subdivision, not not what yeah. the council loss is talking oh, about, but putting 10, block, 10 units on an A block. Yeah, the standard is usually 5%. On subdivisions, which I think is relatively reasonable. Councillor Uh Thank you, Madam Mayor. The, uh, this policy, I think, has been one that uh, we've been needing for a while, but it also highlights the state government needs to take action and amend the planning scheme, uh, planning act to have infrastructure contribution plan uh, framework, which we've uh, written to uh, the current Minister for Planning to look at ways a council can pay for infrastructure on new developments and subdivisions such as these. There is a, uh, Tasmania is one of the only states in the Commonwealth that has no infrastructure contribution framework other than these type of policies such, with, such as the open space. It needs a state framework. Every council has to go through this and there's some inconsistencies between the various councils on these type of policies. There needs to be a consistent approach across the entire state of Tasmania, and councils should be able to get from the developers sufficient funds to do a community activity <coughs> and such as open space and other things and collect it up front. It shouldn't be up to our ratepayers to have to pay for things that the developers should be paying for. I believe yeah. Legat's yeah. working actively yeah. on that at the moment. Well, thank you. If I could just advise, Tazwater just brought back our headworks charge into okay. the calculations as well. As well. Okay, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carry. Yes, we'll break for the annual break. We're back on number six? Yep.
We're up to governance reports, 4.1, a policy review, gifts and benefits. Um, the recommendation is that the council receives the report and one, that the council endorse the minor amendments to the gifts and benefits policy as submitted, or two, we do not endorse the minor amend amendments as submitted. So we need a mover and a seconder for one of those motions. Um, Councillor Andrews, which one are you moving? So we accept the endorse the minor amendments to the use and benefits policy. Yes. I'll second that motion. Councillor Adams is seconding. Any discussion? Council Where do I find the minor amendments? Where do I, oh, this They're is in the attachments. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'll open it up. This change is the value from 50 to 60. Yeah. 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 That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they're pretty minor. Too. No discussion. Okay, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. <coughs> the next one is the Campbelltown <coughs> Tourist Park. The recommendation is that Council accept in principle the Campbelltown Tourist Park Master Plan of 19th of April 2022, endorse in principle the Campbelltown Tourist Park Preliminary Feasibility Assessment Report of January 2024. Uh, C, undertake the consultation with the Campbelltown District Forum and D, request council officers to seek external sources of funding to implement stage one of the Campbelltown Tourist Park Monster Plan. I need a mover and a second, please. Councillor Andrews. And Councillor Adams. Any discussion? Councillor McCullough. I'd like to foreshadow the... Uh... An alternative motion, please. Well, Shadow, yes. Councillor Goss, you had your hand up? Yeah. Um, sorry, I on that. That's all right. Um, so I, I can't support the motion. Um, and uh, I, I won't um, be supporting it because, um, you know, just the, the, the money fee, $9.5 million, is just. Um, you know, it's just far too much money. And even if we could get uh, half of that money in, still talking about you know, four four point seven million dollars shortfall. Um, that's if we get half of it. And um, we have made some contingencies for for um, if things go up, it's a bit more expensive. But uh, that's always a, a hidden cost. You don't know what it's going to be. The other reason why I'm not supporting that is not only just the money, but I, I know four caravan. Parks in Tasmania, which have closed in the last two years, <coughs> um, uh, and um, they've closed them down, sold up the ground, and move away from that type of um, I mean, you see, one of them was a big four caravan park, which I thought was, was, was quite uh, different, um, and uh, so I'll, I'll, that's one reason. Oh. Um, the other reason is that Blackburn Park seems to be very effective now, and we get a lot of people frequent that area and use it. Um, it's a. Um, it's got low, much lower co cost to council and uh, sorry to rate cars and all the Midlands in that kind of facility and uh, um, and they bring a lot to the town. They're, they're going to the going to the shops. They're going to the the eating places. They're stopping and looking at the goods, looking at the um, all the activities in the middle of the main street in in Long, in, in um, Campbelltown. And I think that um, you know that's a really good thing. We haven't seen. We're not really sure what's going to happen to um, to the um, uh, Blackburn Park. We're going to close that down and put it around the other side. Um, we've got no report on what Blackburn Park brings to the um, Cameltown area, and uh, I think I'd like to see, see those kind of things. Um, I do think we probably, if we we need to do something, you know, free camping possibly. Um, if we need a big area, maybe that should be an area for free camping. It's got a bigger area and you can have put more vans there. But Blackburn Park never seems like it's overcrowded. So I'm not sure why we'll be looking at um, extending unless people are bringing up and saying there's no room in Blackburn Park, where do we go? Uh, across the state, there is lots and lots of push for little, um, can I say, personalised caravan, overnight stay, free camping places. Um, I know there's at least um, a couple already in Campbelltown where people can use free camping overnight, and there's some in um, 
you know, there's other places around the state as well. There's a lot in Northern Midlands. I think there might be seven, actually. And um, there are only small places where people can camp. Mm -hmm. And that free camping, um, people seem to frequently things really a lot. And I think that um, we ought to be looking at that type of stuff if you want to really grow, the, grow that stuff. Yeah, we've got to have some um, accommodation buildings there. But I mean, realistically and sensibly, if we build six or seven units, that's not going to be enough to, to accommodate a conference at the, um, at the football ground. I mean, it's not enough. There's still not going to be enough accommodation for those people. Unless we build 20 or 30 or 40 units, then um, that won't be enough for a conference, but I don't think six or seven would make any impact on that. So I can't support it. Thank you. Councillor Terrett. Thank you. Uh, I concur with uh, Councillor Goss in this matter. My other concerns, it's in relation to uh, we already have additional costs coming in, particularly Longford uh, Caravan Park as well. So the initial setting up, uh, costs are already setting up and the ongoing uh, maintenance that's required on that and the need to update, uh, upgrade these facilities is certainly <coughs> a high demand. Uh, we're doing something which maybe the private sector should be getting involved with and if it meant facilitating a caravan park with the cooperation of the private sector, I think that's a good way of going. Uh, the I also concern that we're not consulting with the neighbours and the community around that area before this cop set goes ahead, would go ahead. Uh, Blackburn Park, we should do some expenditure, and I've sent an email out to councillors that we need a, a toilet down there because of other problems. Uh, I was down at Blackburn Park uh, last week. There were 15 caravans being parked there, so there is a demand, but it's a question of our investment, total investment, and stage one and stage two. We already have seen a 20% increase in costs uh, in the projects which we've seen. Uh, I think this would be an unreasonable burden onto the, the ratepayers for putting this caravan park and tourist park there. Councillor Andrews. Um, I'm supporting this um, motion because uh, I um, um, valued what was we talked about in, in uh, council workshop where it was explained to us the ins and outs of this project. I think that Campbelltown has needed something like this for a long time and the site itself has needed something to happen at it for a long time. Um, I take um, Councillor Goss's remark about, you know, if we um, look at the accommodation side of this, there wouldn't be enough there to support, um, you know, a couple of um, teams playing on the footy ground or a convention or whatever, but it's a start. And Campbelltown has needed um, uh, more accommodation, reasonably priced accommodation for a long, long time. And I like this idea that we're going, going to attempt it in two stages. So, you know, we've got a fallback position. We're going to do stage one and see how it's going and then we'll consider stage two. So I think it's a, a valuable, it will be a valuable asset for that part of our municipality and I think it's a good plan. Having had it explained at workshop and, and we went through the figures in, in, uh, fairly extensively uh, and it just depends on whether we choose the right one as a council. And Councillor Archer. Uh, <clears throat> yes, look, I have agree with the previous comments from everybody, really. I, I still quite have to accept the, the master plan. I think it may be a situation of someone else doing the work rather than the council. The option, obviously, is to dispose of the land somehow. I'm not sure whether the council should be looking at developing it, it themselves. Um, I know the free camping situation is very fluid. Um, there are issues about, say, building toilet blocks for people when they're meant to be self-contained, all these kind of issues, cost the council, maintaining parks, cost the council. Um, I'd like to keep the project on the books at this stage, but I do think we need to assess the cost of looking after the land, what that land is worth, so that I, as a councillor, can make a decision as to the best move forward. So I'm happy to keep the process going, consult with the Campbell County District Forum, um, but I'm not obviously approving any financial expenditure at this stage. Council Lambert. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Look, I, um, I would like to see a further report come back. And the reason I'm asking for that is because some very important people haven't been consulted in this process, and that is the Campbelltown community. Um, and, in, and in particular, the business community who, who's, who could actually benefit a lot from this if we get it right. 
So I would like to see, um, I think, you know, that we should perhaps accept in principle the idea of the plan. Um, I think we should undertake consultation with the Campbelltown District Forum and the wider community, including the business community, to get their comments on this proposal. And then I would like to see a, a further report come back, which includes all of those comments um, from those, those diff different areas, um, before we make a final decision on um, extending external resources, etc. So I would tend to take out um, Section D, where it says request council officers seek an external source of funding, and they put that, uh, similar to what Councillor Archer was saying, just put that on the back burner for a little while, get some more information, get our community more involved. I mean, I think it'd be quite easy to do some drop-in sessions, um, some community meetings, and I think that would, would help us to then get a feeling for what the community feels about this, um, give them an opportunity to look at the, the proposal, the master plan. So I think in that we probably need to accept in principle the master plan to be able to then put it out for community consultation. So I'm happy to have a, um, and I presume I, I, I would just accept in principle the Campbelltown preliminary feasibility report and then undertake consultation with the Campbelltown District Forum and the wider Campbelltown community. And then, as a, as a D, bring back a further report which includes uh, the results of the community consultation uh, for final... Um, so are you asking for amendment to the <coughs> yes. mover and seconder? Would they be happy to amend their motion? Councillor mm -hmm. Andrews, Councillor Adams? Yeah, okay. Councillor Adams? Yes, yes. Yes, so we, can we amend that? We mm -hmm. take out the D and put in and accept the principle. Take out D, but put undertake consultation with the Campbelltown Local District Forum and the wider, and the wider community, community, including yeah. the business community. Including the business sector, yeah. 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 Is there any more? Okay, I'll read that out just to make sure we move it. And then D was. A further report. Yeah, um, bring back a further report which includes comments from the community consul consultation for a final decision of council. Yep. Okay, so the decision <coughs> moved to Councillor Andrews, seconded to Councillor Adams. The council accept in principle the Campbelltown Tourist Park Master Plan of 19th of April 2022. Mm -hmm. Accept in principle the Campbelltown Tourist Park Preliminary Feasibility Assessment Report of January 2024. Undertake consultation with the Campbelltown District Forum and the wider Campbelltown community, including the business sector, and D, a further report to council, which includes comment from the consultation process for further decision. Uh, mover and second are happy with that? Yeah. Okay, yes. any further discussion? Yeah, I, I, I want to foreshadow. You already have, yes. You've already foreshadowed the yeah. motion. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to say what it is yet. Okay, that's fine. Council. Oh, so I've I'm spoken. One. I actually haven't spoken about it. I've already had one talk. Of course, the motion's changed a bit now. Because I... No, yes, I um, just mentioned about the foreshadowed motion. You can foreshadow a motion. That is that's fine. fine. But I haven't actually spoken about the, the current motion. No, that's fine. Okay, you will speak to that. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, yeah, I couldn't support this. I think the numbers are just extraordinary and the uh, liability on council would be massive. Uh, I would be more um, accepting of the, the tourist park master plan being accepted the council prepare the land and get the uh, get the uh, approvals for this uh, project and then put it out on the market for public uh, or the um, private sector to develop the situation at market rates as opposed to us doing anything on that further. And Councillor Goss, you, yes, this, this is an amended uh, motion. You can speak again. Um. <coughs> Uh, no, I'm okay. I think I'm okay. I'm just, I'm still not happy about because once I've seen it here before, we've, we accept things in principle, and next thing you know, they're on the table and they're live. Mm. Just care, care for what you're accepting. So if we accept that master plan, that's what we want to put forward, what we want to want to see happen, and we're, we're, you know, stamping it, and then that can go forward. And next thing you know, we've got a nine and a half million dollar project or more on the bench, and. Um, 
and great priority to plan for. So, you know, I still can't accept it because that's, that's in there. I think we should, um, we could, uh, I'm not sure what we could do, but I don't think well, we can accept well, the plan. Well, do you just release the plan for public consultation? You release the plan? That'd be, yeah. that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that would be good. Yep. Move and second, happy to add that in. Yep. So we're getting rid of so get everything rid of except. Get, right. get rid of the word except and put release. And and also in principle. And in principle, yeah. 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 And also with the physical Yeah. 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 You haven't got your full shampoo. Uh, I reckon this will probably pass. Okay, okay. Okay, so now we've changed it, but hey, Council Boss. Can't what is that? that? Words I can't quite see where the lines are. No, no, so it's it's the it's principles yeah. rubbed I'll, out. I'll read it out, Council Boss. Yeah. Okay, the Council A released the Campbelltown Tourist Park Master Plan of 19th of April 2022. B released the Campbelltown Tourist Park Preliminary Feasibility Assessment Report of January 2024. C undertake consultation with the Campbelltown District Forum and the Campbelltown, the wider Campbelltown community, including the business sector. And D a further report to Council which includes comment from the consultation process for further decision. There's nothing there about budgets. No, that's, that was, that's what concerns me. There's nothing then there about... We budget. had something along the lines of, can I see the feasibility on the, the actual money it's going to bring back to inside as that a rental property? That was in property. the that's workshop that we did, okay. that's the feasibility. Mm -hmm. okay. It okay. is an attachment, you've got yeah. a heap of stuff in your Thank you. Thank Council you. Archer. Uh, look, I'll, I'll support the <coughs> motion simply because it doesn't commit Council no. to any budget spend, even though Councillor Goss says... No, we're locked in. We're not definitely no. not locked in. No, we're not it is, it is keeping the process <laughs> moving. It is keeping the process moving. That's if it goes to the private sector from a future council decision, yeah. that's great. We've done the groundwork. We've yeah. created the mm -hmm. seed. That is not making the council spend any money on further development. Sorry. That's correct. I see I'm racing. So you have Councillor Adam, do you wish to speak? Uh, no, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, if the private sector is going to race towards it, but they may do. We've heard comments that some... Uh, going backwards, there's certainly a lot of private little stuff happening all around the place, and uh, uh, so the feasibility issue is uh, is worth considering, and we'll need to give that consideration. But it'd be worth good uh, to talk to the the local business community and see what they say. I should imagine it would be a plus for most of them, but uh, uh, we need them to make sure that the viability and where where are uh, caravan parks and this sort of accommodation fits into the into the tourist uh, planning of the future of Tasmania. Yeah. It's a bit unfortunate some of the caravan park properties now, the ones that are closing, are uh, because the value of the land is so yeah. high in so he's selling it. Um, so they're losing their caravan park, which will make Camelltown a very Sorry. prime <laughs> location. Okay, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carry. Okay, monthly financial report, Ms. Bricknell. No, I've got nothing special to report this month. And the recommendation is that Council receive and note the monthly financial report for the period ending the 31st of January 2024 and authorise budgets 2023-24 alterations as listed in item 4. And then a mover and a seconder, Councillor Foss. Yep. And a seconder, please, Councillor Archer. Any discussion? Can I just ask a question? Yes. Um, on page 59, it mentions Norfolk planning and book sales. I presume that that's the Nick Hagarth book, is it? Uh, yes, it is. So we're still selling them? Yes, well, yeah. um, yes, they purchase them and they sell them for on yeah. our behalf. Yeah. And pay us when they sell them. Yeah, well, that's good. Okay. okay, I'll put the recommendation on those in favour. Aye. Aye. Okay. Carried. Okay, now, 15.2 is the 2024-25 municipal budget. Mm -hmm. And the recommendation is that council... Hang on. Council, 
Council adhere to its previously adopted budget process as detailed below and endorse the following 2024-25 draft budget par parameters and B, the following budget parameters are suggested for 2024-25 budget for Council consideration, review and endorsement and we note Count Hobart's December 2023 annual movement of CPI was 3.3% and the national was 4.2%. A lot of fun. Yeah. So this is basically setting out, so that we can start doing a draft budget, setting out what the parameters will use, and of course council can change those through the process. But um, so we'll basically use CPI, um, Hobart CPI, and um, interest on investment will be the cash rate four point three five. Um, the wages will be our um, enterprise bargaining agreement rates three point five. Um, and so on. So, um, yeah, so that'll be just the parameters that will draft the first budget. Um, so, Councillor Goss, you're moving that recommendation? Thank you. A second, that, please, Councillor McCullough. Any discussion? Councillor Terry. Uh, just when we did the large, last budget, we, I raised fees and charges scheduled for a review. I did get some assurances that would occur throughout the year. I wonder if that could also be included within the parameters uh, as well, uh, in relation to that. The other one that uh, I have concerns about is the allocation of the special projects assistance for festivals uh, and events, which is included in our budget, which in fact should be, a, well, in my belief, should be a separate item, because it's actually the allocation of funds rather than the budgeting of funds. Yeah. No, that's fine. And we actually do do it separately, but it sometimes gets all put into one. Okay, no further comments. That's fine. I just want to uh, section E, cash reserves committed to specific plan projects. Um, what kind of figure we got on cash <coughs> reserves being being used for that? The, the cash reserves? Reserves? Yeah. Um, what? Is it it's bigger or is it just a. No, we have investments of uh, approximately 20 million at the moment, um, but obviously a lot of that is our, um, our capital works program that isn't completed. Um, and then we do have some infrastructure reserves. We have um, money held in trust um, for bonds and um, those sort of things. Um, yes, so yeah, it's not possible. talking about all the cash reserves, though, is it? It's only talking about some of them. No, that's all of them. All of them. Yes. Okay, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carry. Uh, 15.3 is the policy review cemeteries, and the recommendation is the Council endorse the amended cemeteries policy. Yes, these are just minor um, reviews. Mm. We've had to uh, become the, the cemetery manager of the Bishop's Burn Cemetery, which we took over. Uh, and we just had to tweak a few clauses when they went when the local government office went back through it. Um, for the minister to sign off to say that we can be managers of the bishops. I'll move that. Councillor Adams is moving. Councillor Andrews is seconding. Any discussion, Councillor Andrews? Can I ask a question about the Bishops Burn Cemetery? Did we sort of inherit that because the church got sold? Or? No, well, that was part of the church property yes. uh, that council decided that they would purchase. Uh, that's right. And um, oh, the, com the community decided they would purchase, they yes. were really on council. Yeah. Um, but it actually comes into council's name. Yeah. And we become the managers because of the, of the Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now we might delegate that down to the committee, but yeah. um, at this stage, we to get to, for the purchase to go through, we have to become the manager. No further discussion. I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carry. Works reports, um, policy review, on site formal exemption. You've got to um, come and talk to us before. <coughs> we'll move on to the second and then discussion. Councillor Cross. I'll see. And Councillor Adams. Any discussion? Oh, well, we're trying to move forward on this and get our. Yeah. Get our uh, policy in, in order. We've done a fair bit of work on stormwater uh, in the municipality. There's been <coughs> uh, some money spent and we've got improving some. We've got two two towns, Perth and Longford, that are very flat and need a lot of uh, a lot of work 
to maintain in two books, and this is part of it. So, yep. Support. Uh, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Uh, Aye. Against? Carried. Okay, we're going to bring in here. Close, Thank you. Yes, thank you.